The True North The Racing Podcast is presented by Vision 20 Studios. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm Megan Mitchell, this is my co-host John Morrison, and you, yeah you, <laughs> are listening to the True North Racing Podcast. Time to strap in, pull those belts, and get ready for an action-packed episode of the True North Racing Podcast. Are you ready to unmask, uh, I mean, unhelmet your favorite racers? Get ready for the most fun you'll have outside the racetrack to get you ready for the next race. You're listening to John Morrison and Megan Mitchell, and this is the True North Racing Podcast. All right, welcome back to a new episode of the True North Racing Podcast. We are live here at the Motorama Custom Car and Motorsports Expo. Uh, I'm your host, John Morrison. Joining me right now, before we bring on our other guest, uh, Cody Wilds, we got Jennifer Hatch joining us right now. Jennifer, how are you? I'm good. I'm excited to see all these people. This is amazing. All right, it's a packed show today. It's awesome. Uh, we have some great news to talk about. Uh, Jennifer, uh, for anyone walking by right now, we had Jennifer on the True North Racing Podcast this week, and... Which was amazing. Which we was had a lot so of fun. many fan questions. Oh, yeah. And, it was, yeah, it we, was we had a great show. I've had so many people reach out and say that was like one of the best shows, and it was awesome. It, it was a lot of fun for sure. But one of the best things about it was is that we decided to, you were talking about on the show, we were talking about how 20 years ago you got a flag gifted to you from a fan, and we were like, well, let's use the power of social media to find this, hopefully, find this fan. And sure enough, within 12 hours of me posting about it on a post on Joe Media, we were able to find this fan, and you guys had already started talking. What, first of all, how, how was that for you to, for that whole process? Yeah, so, um, and kind of the whole point of that story was about fan interaction yep. with the drivers and doing little things for each other, like drivers going up to the stands, drivers giving away t-shirts or their hero cards or whatever, just that interaction. And I had a story where a fan, and the only reason I knew is because I had broke my, I think what year it was, because I had <laughs> broke my arm into like a gazillion pieces. And so I had my cast on in the picture. And so she had made a flag for me, um, and she was seven years old, and I was a lot younger, obviously. Yeah. I was 20 years younger. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so she had made this flag, and I had kept it uh, the whole, this whole time. And so when we reached out onto social media, and I had done that a couple times before, like on a few uh, racing sites and stuff, but to no avail. And then as we have our story going on, and, and we just, we, I wasn't even going to bring that up. It was just something that just, came it was just up natural. while we were going. And I had the picture, and you posted the picture of me and the young girl, and a picture of me just last year with the same flag. And uh, next thing you know, like, the phone's blowing up. <laughs> and we found her. So we, uh, through the power of social media, within 12 hours, we found a girl from 20 years ago who is now 27. She's an OPP out of Hamilton. Her name's Amanda. She has a huge uh, racing family background. And we found each other. So what we're going to do... Yeah, what are we going to do? Which was your, all your idea. <laughs> I don't think it was this my is, idea. This is poor big booty Judy getting thrown <laughs> under the bus. So she's going to come out to um, Delaware. Okay. Maybe Flamborough even because yeah. she lives closer to there. So we're going to take my bone stock, Big Booty Judy, and we're going to have Amanda turn some laps in it. That's awesome. So 20 years later, we're going to reconnect, and we've been talking ever since. That's awesome. Yeah. And the good part is that we are going to be covering that footage. Um, as I did, I did say, like, hey, you know what? With, with something like this, you know, it's always nice to have those moments. And, of course, it's great that you guys were able to chat and stuff like that. But we want to see, we want to hear those conversations. We want, to, we want to see what it's like for her, what she feels when she gets to go out on the track, stuff like that. That is, that is our main goal here is to, is to really show how you guys reunite 
Uh, and hopefully, we're gonna bring. The, you're, you're gonna have to bring that flag out and do a recreation of that photo I don't 20 even, years. I, of the I moved in the fall, and I think I think it may have. I think, it, I think it may have not made the trip. Oh, no. After 20 years, I had that. I'm really like, hoping you find it. I, I'm going to look, but I don't think it made it. But anyways, I mean, that's just funny that I kept it for 20 years, and then I finally don't have it because it got covered in water, and yeah. then we find her. But anyways, it doesn't matter. You, we'll be, we'll we figure got some something. Time. We got some time to yeah. find it, and that's all I'll that matters. I'll take a look. I'll take a look. Uh, so that, first of all, again, the power of social media can be a good thing, and this is one of those stories. It's a great feel-good story. I can't believe that within 24 hours of the episode dropping, we were lo to locate her, um, and yeah. you guys have been able to chat, which is obviously fantastic news. Yeah, so, so excited, and uh, I we said we're not going to meet until we do that. Yeah, yeah. So that <laughs> is it's a genuine. So it's literally a genuine first meet, and uh, and I'm excited. And thanks for thanks for doing that no for problem. me. No problem. Thank you for allowing us to help you, and I'm so thankful that we were able to find her for you. So that way, you guys again can reconnect after after 20 years even Absolutely. though it, it's awesome uh not only did we get to do that yesterday as uh, most of you guys know if you guys are walking around the show right now it was international women's day and uh jennifer got some pretty big news uh yeah. You are now the race director of the Great Lakes Legend Series. Yeah, so uh, we announced yesterday that I'm the race director for the Great Lakes Legends Series, uh, powered by <laughs> Fresh Dome. Hey, Lucas. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so that's uh, pretty big, yeah. actually. I don't, I don't know of a lot of lady race directors. I, I know we don't have any current ones. And I think NASCAR Pinty's series... Sharon, I think, was uh, yeah. was the race director, but I think she's retired. So it's pretty big news, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're excited for that new. I'm going to have no friends, <laughs> but that's okay. Everyone's going to hate you now. Yeah, that's all right. It's all good. <laughs> Just enjoy the weekend. Bandwagon. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, congratulations Thank on, the, you. on the new. What gig. a great and what a great day to release that that news Absol on uh, International Women's Day. Yeah, it is, it is one of the best times ever to do that. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on stage to talk about that. We are definitely very appreciative of you and everything that you do, and we're excited to watch you in Big Booty Judy. We can't wait for to meet Amanda um, at a track this summer and yeah. uh, see how she does turning laps and again reconnecting after twenty years. It's going to be a lot of fun. It was all about social media, and thanks again. No problem. Anytime. Thank you for joining us. Okay. <laughs> what was that for? You got the mic. <laughs> I got my own mic. Um, before we bring on our next guest here, I am. I just got some breaking news for everyone. We do have a race car for sale. Um, it is a Canadian vintage modified that runs at Flamborough Speedway. Uh, the gentleman over here to my right in the blue sweater, he uh, he is the car owner. If you guys are interested in the car, uh, he will be here around for a little bit if you guys are interested in chatting with him. It is a bad, fast car. I can tell you guys that right now. Uh, what number was it this year? Number seven. Number seven. Quinn Murdoch. Okay. That it was is a, a fast, fast car. Yeah, that That's a, a fast, fast car. car. That's a good car. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I anyone, miss my days in the Canadian Vintage <laughs> Modifieds. I'm, well, I, I, I don't chance. have time. Now's no, I chance. don't have time. I cannot do another race car. I got enough on the go. <laughs> uh, so, and if any if anyone's listening right now, and if he's not here, by the time you guys get over here, he uh, you guys can come see me. I will have all the contact information to be able to get a hold. So here's your chance to get in a race car. It is not here at the show, uh, but you guys do have an opportunity to buy a race car here this for this uh, for this coming season. Hi, Steve. How's it going, buddy? Turnkey, he says. Turnkey. Tur turnkey, too. We Just, could start an auction. No, we don't have a license. We can't do that. <laughs> uh, but, Jen, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, next to the stage, we are going to be joined by the wild man, Cody Wilds. He drives the number 14 super stock at Delaware Speedway, and we are excited to chat with him, as always. He is one fun character. But the, I'm going to be honest, the one thing I'm not happy about so far is I don't see a laugh counter with you. Laugh Yeah, you got to turn it on there, bud. A laugh, a laugh counter? Yeah, you were supposed to bring a laugh counter. I never got told about well, this. Well, there was, I was told there was a laugh counter going to be involved today because apparently you make everyone laugh. Well, I don't know. Well, now, now well, I guess uh, now I'm going to have to give your dad some crap over that because that's what he was saying. You want me to run home quick? On well, you. I mean, that's three and a half hours. I think you're going to miss the show. I'm a race car driver. I can make it happen. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the the Pearson Airport is right across the street. It'll take you 30 minutes to get to London from here. So Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll be good. 
instead of the three hour drive. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for joining us today up on the stage here for our live show. How, how's, how's your off season been going? Oh, not bad. We uh, it's actually been a very calm off season. We haven't done very much. Um, We've done a little bit here and there, but we're not really stressing about a whole lot right now. We got a good car under us, and we're just kind of excited to get it back on the track. Yeah, you guys picked up the Colton Everham ride that he was racing last year up at Sunset Speedway, and now you guys are going to be running Delaware with it. Um, of course, now we're gonna we got to address the elephant in the room on that one. Uh, so at the end of last year, with like two, I think two or three races left, um, you unfortunately uh, had a very terrible wreck, uh, hurt yourself pretty good. Um, and unfortunately, that resulted in the car being, you know, having to go to the to the race car graveyard. Unfortunately, but uh, you know, how's uh, how have you been feeling since then? Uh, not too bad, you know. Like it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Um, we got very lucky that car kept us very safe. But uh, me personally, right now, my leg's doing great. You know, I, I wouldn't even. I, I don't even remember sometimes that I broke my leg not even three months ago like it's it, it is insane uh, I, t I took proper care of it and uh, made sure that it was nice and nice and strong for this race season lots of milk you got to keep those bones strong <laughs> yeah you do <laughs> but uh yeah yeah i'm feeling great good so obviously with the new car uh, you just jumped into super socks last year this is going to be your second season what are some of the things that you've learned from year one that you're going to apply to year two to get you faster to hopefully be at the top of the podium at some point this year? Because let's be real, I'm I'm coming out for a race weekend, uh, possibly two. We got to see, we got to, we got to schedule something still for that one. Yeah. But uh, we you're, we're going to have you for at least one race, uh, and it's going to be the season opener. And we, your dad and I were joking. He's like, wouldn't it be funny if that when you come out? is when he gets his first feature win in a super stock because <laughs> you win a lot. And of course last year, big learning curve. You, you, yeah. you go from legends to super socks. That's a big, That's a big, big step. big step, right? You're going for a car that pretty much hugs you to a car where you look beside you and you're expecting someone to be over there. Yeah. Um, what's been that adjustment like for you to going into year two now? Well, so in year one, it was uh, definitely, I was worried about the width of the car. The width really worried me because uh, I, I've never been in a car that I have that much space beside me. It's always been, um, it's always been like, yeah, I'm getting hugged by the car pretty much. So that was a learning curve. But going into this year, um, I'm more ready for the... Uh, I, I got to get more ready for the um, difference in. So I was I, I was in the coil the coil springs last year, and yep. now I'm in the um, now I'm in the leaf springs. Yep. So I'm expecting that to be a big learning curve for me. Um, yeah, that really is the only thing that's bothering me right now is uh, just seeing the difference of that. And I'm sure after the first practice, I'll be fine. It, it, it'd be like nothing ever, never nothing ever changed really, right? Yeah. So of course you got to be leaning on some of the the, uh, the the veteran drivers in the super stock division. Who's been helping you out learn uh, and teach you, or who's been, who have you been learning from to get you prepared for this year? Kenny McNichol. Kenny McNichol has uh, definitely done a lot for me. He uh, he pretty much is is right there to tell me what I've done wrong and what I got to do do next time. Uh, he guided me all the way through this whole thing and. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but I've I've been getting help from lots of other people. I don't want to I don't want to put them aside at all. Yeah. Um, I've gotten help with tons of people, but uh, Kenny McNichol is the the main person that has really, really put his time and effort into me, which I'm very thankful for. Of course, with uh, Kenny McNichol, he's actually got two cars here this year at the show. He's got the number seventeen legend car, which is driven by. Uh, uh, Haley, correct? Haley, Haley yeah. McNichol. And then, of course, he's got his own uh, truck over there in the Oscar racing booth. Um, it is uh, beautiful looking rides. I I'm excited to see how those ones race. But, of course, with everything that you're learning right now, what's the mindset going into this year? How are you feeling heading into 2024? You know, actually, I'm feeling more confident, uh, more confident going into this year than I did last year. Like this year, even after the big wreck, I'm not going out there worried about anything. I'm going straight, straight for that checkered. I want to, I want to get that win this year. Um, it's only my second year, 
a lot of people will maybe think I'm nuts for it, but I feel like it's definitely something that can happen this year. Let's be real. Most people think race car drivers are nuts to begin with. So, I mean, yeah. it's it's not too far-fetched to say that you're going to go out there and, and you, you're, I highly believe that you could definitely wheel that car to a win. Of course, now your, your dad and I have these conversations quite often and the way he talks about you and, of course, like the way I, the videos I've seen of you racing, uh, the knowledge you have it is, and if, for anyone walking by, how old are you again? I'm 18 years old. 18 years old. How many championships have you won? Oh. Too many to count, right? Uh, <laughs> 16, I think, now. This is a guy who has, is that is that guy that everyone's looking for that has X amount of experience at 20 years old with 20 years experience. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. But now, of course, moving to a full body car, it's always more pressure, more, um, more learning. And with that in mind, it's always, sometimes it's easy to get lost in the simple things because you're trying to t learn so much. Uh, have you how have you been able to suppress that over the course of the year when you've been on a big learning curve you know what honestly i'll go back to kenny mcnichol he <laughs> he has he has literally brought me through everything i know he has he has showed me how to do it and there's still a lot that i don't know there's still a ton that i don't know but uh everything that i do know I have to thank uh, Kenny McNichol and uh, my dad, and then there's there's others outside of that, those yeah. two people. But uh, those two are definitely the ones that have they they brought me through everything I know in racing. That's that's those those two and a couple other people that have. Yeah, they've uh, they're they're definitely big supporters of you and your racing ventures, and of and I know damn well that that car has been already been looked over by Kenny. Uh, any upgrades that needed to be done have been already been made, I'm assuming. And that car you guys have designed this year, I'm still upset that you guys didn't go with the pink car. I, I don't know if you're upset about it, like a lot of us are, but uh, you, you guys you guys put it out there for us to talk about, and you guys went still with the, the generic yellow and black. Like, what, what's up with that? Dude, I don't even know. My dad, I, I was like, yeah, man, I'm all in for the pink. I want this pink car. It would be amazing. <laughs> it stands out. Right? Like, there's not many people that have bright pink cars like no. that, right? But uh, I came I came home from uh, school the one day, and I goes, yeah, I know everybody's voting for the pink, but uh, sponsors are saying black and yellow. And I was like, ah. Uh, sponsors rule. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, sponsors are what makes the world, uh, what makes the racing world go around, and if we can't always please every single one of them, but if we can uh, definitely make sure that they're happy with yeah. the outcome of the car, I still, I still think a pink design would work one day if, given circumstances, I think it would be a great one. I was excited because I've been asking for probably, probably five six years now for a pink car, and I thought, oh my god, is this gonna be my year? Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is okay, so. <laughs> This is where we need to get your dad on board. I think this is a great marketing idea. Right? Hold on. Hear me out here, okay? You race your entire season in a yellow and black. Yep. Peel that off. Go run Frosttoberfest and go run Autumn Colors. They're both in October. True. It makes it that much sweeter because then it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yep. You know, it, you're covering all the bases and you're pleasing everyone while still... Supporting yeah, a great cause. Exactly. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll get my uh, get my uh, my dad thinking about it because, you know, I would love to do that. I think it would be a blast. We'll uh, we'll see if we can make something work. I know a sticker guy that can help us with it. So I I, th I think you know a sticker guy very very well. Yeah, yeah. As uh, your dad obviously has it owns a Wilds Printing, and he does our stickers and they look top notch each and every year. <laughs> and he tries his absolute best. Oh yeah, he. Uh, those Joe Media stickers, they're 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 one of a kind. I love them. We we decided to go with a new logo this year, which is all, of course always awesome. Like it's a great. Yeah. I love the new logo. Nice fresh start. Oh yeah, it's you know we we we've been around here for the next last four years now. Yeah. It's uh, we didn't think it was time for a change, but when I asked my friend to design a T-shirt last year, she's like, "Do you think we can refresh your logo a little bit?" And I'm like, "Shoot, go ahead." Yeah, I was. Might as well. 
knocked it out of the park. I think it looks great. And of course, I keep going to her for all our designs. And then, of course, I ship, ship off to your dad and be like, hey, can you yep. make this happen? Yeah. And he is always <laughs> more than willing to uh, to help us out. But we, yeah, we definitely enjoy uh, your, I enjoy your partnership with your dad because, hell, that's a, like, how do you, uh, I've been using him for the last couple of years here for stickers, and he's done a great job each and every time. And, of course, now that's forged a partnership between you and I. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to see how, you know, how your season goes. And, and of course, we're going to be going down there. We're going to be catching a race day vlog. So, which means you better be open to be on the camera for most of the day. Oh, heck, yeah. I'm always open to be on <laughs> camera. It's, uh... We're gonna have to have we're gonna have two GoPros in the car, one facing you, one facing out front, and of course we're gonna be chatting with you after each and every race, after practice sessions, and we're gonna give us our thoughts and you know really show us what it takes throughout a race day because I think that's the problem is that a lot of people see these kind of cars and go, man, they just go fast, turn left, and just hope for the best, but anyone who knows knows that ain't the case there is so much more going on behind the scenes than just cars going fast and turning left i've gotten that my entire life oh you go fast turn left my my lawnmower's got more horsepower than your race car blah 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 you, you really like some of my buddies now are coming to the track and seeing everything that's actually being done and they're like wow there's so much more effort into this sport than you would ever think about absolutely like it's for so like my fiance, she she's never been into racing. Okay, she was never into racing before she got with me, and then of course we're. I take her to a race. We're walking through the pits, and she's just like, "What are, what are they doing?" I'm like, "I'm like, well, they got to make adjustments. Why? Well, when they're on the track, they can go from loose to tight in a race, or they go from tight to loose. They got to make the adjustments to find that balance. Yeah, because, and I and I've listened to. TJ Marshall from the Canadian Vintage Modifieds, he he tells me he's a very lazy driver. He sets it up a specific way, and he's set like he is so smooth on that wheel. Yeah. There's no you know he they've been able to figure out how to set that car up to not let it step out huh. unless there's oh yeah dude we'll watch the in car on that yeah it is so smooth watching him. But meanwhile we could be watching uh, someone from the mini socks and they're sawing on the wheel because. They can't yep. get they can't get the the drive off the corner. It, it, yep. You can see them how loose they are getting in that they got to catch it, and then next thing you know they're two car lengths off the car in front of them because of it. And with you race car drivers, we all know. Well, I I can't attest to that because I only driven a car once. For you, for you drivers, it's really finding that art of what works for you. Some guys really like a like a nice loose car. Some guys like a tight car. What it, like where do you, do you want to find that happy medium or do you just want to I want to I want to find that happy medium usually but uh, I'm usually a little bit more happy with a loose car I like I like my cars a little bit loose but not too loose um, you get them too loose and then they just step out yeah, and it's just yeah it's scary coming off of off of a corner sideways <laughs> we got Greg McPherson of inside track over here Greg how's it going sir it's all good how, how, thank you for having no problem. Thank you for having us. Thank you for uh, putting all this, helping us put all this together. It's so much fun. We love doing this. It's it's what makes this, what makes our lives a lot better. I'm going to be honest with you. This is a lot of fun. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? There's so much content to be created around here. Uh, did you catch what we were talking with Jennifer earlier about? So Jennifer, Jennifer, just reconnected with a fan from 20 years ago. All because we put out a post on Monday night, tw less than 12 hours later, through the, through the power of social media, we're able to reconnect her with that fan. Yeah. And we were just talking about it. Like, that's, it's incredible. Like, that stuff like that needs to be talked about. So good. It's, it's oh, yeah. It's the place to be, right? Exactly. It's the place to be. And, Canada's PRI. <laughs> Canada's PRI. I love that. Maybe new slogan for next year? <laughs> Thanks so much, Greg. Yeah, it's insane how that stuff happens, eh? Like... You never think about it. Twenty years ago, that person's a complete like that's a complete different person at that point, right? Like yep. that's insane. And the fact that they still that they remembered and they they were willing to talk and yeah, hell, the fact that she's gonna be, get a chance to drive Big Booty Judy this summer is that's amazing awesome. news. That's awesome. And of course, Joe Media is gonna be there cashing the whole thing, so that yeah. makes my life a little bit better. I'm gonna be Heck honest yeah. with y'all. Uh, <laughs> 
Thanks, Greg. Uh, that was Greg McPherson from Inside Track. He's uh, he's been one of the biggest supporters of this, and yeah, he definitely awesome. loves uh, loves what he does. That, that is for sure. He loves racing. Um, but yeah, like it's crazy the stuff the con like the content that we can create out of this is absolutely insane. Like we're gonna be working. Like I'm gonna be over here. Uh, so anyone walking by right now, I'm John Morrison from Joe Media and Promotions, and I'm part. I'm the host of the True North Racing Podcast. And uh, after after this, I'll be hanging out in the Boneyard. Uh, event services podcast corner talking if you guys want to come over talk racing uh we will have racers come by stop by all day so uh it's a great chance to talk to some race car drivers that, when they're not in their fire suits oh yeah you know race car drivers are usually some of the most laid back people and uh, until you put that damn helmet on is yeah until you put that helmet on as soon as you put that helmet on we're not as nice anymore you're, you're n I'm, I'm not i can't say anything because i think it'd be bad but you guys definitely change your personalities. Oh yeah. When that even the, even if you guys get the helmet on, the visor can be up. You'll st you'll still be yourself. Yeah. As soon as that visor goes down and you roll on the track, it's like you you flip a switch, and it is absolutely insane. Like how you guys manage that. Oh heck yeah! Like, I know me personally. You can ask me after a race what happened five laps ago. I don't remember it. You black out. I the black race. out and I race. Yeah. Like that's. The only time I ever remember what was happening is if I'm re-watching that race in my GoPro. I'll be like, okay, yeah, I remember doing that now. But from from green to checkered, I don't even I don't remember what I was even doing. It's like it's like a superpower, man. It, the mentality that goes into it is second to none on how you guys manage uh, the races. Like, even if you guys are able to have spotters, like. I'm sure half the time, like, I know how half the time you guys are usually yelling at each other, like. <laughs> yeah, you know, honestly, I don't think I've ever talked to my spotter during a race. Really? You just I, listened? I, I listen, I listen to him. You know, uh, my spotter knows that I, I don't like being talked to very much while I race. I like uh, knowing that someone's above me or coming yeah. below me or there's a wreck. I know that's, that's all I really like when I'm getting spotted for, um, but. Yeah, other than that, I don't think I've ever talked to him other than uh, in cautions. We joke with each other during yeah. cautions, yeah. I mean, I certainly hope so. Like, it's, to me, spotters, like, they could be the best use of information or your worst enemy, and it yep. all depends on who. You got to find that balance for a spotter. Oh, yeah. uh, it is definitely a difficult situation when you don't have a spotter. Sometimes, like, it, it, it's easy in other sports. But yeah. I find sometimes in, in asphalt racing, the higher up you go, the, the ne more necessary of a spotter um, is needed on the track. Yeah. And, of course, with you guys learning it, because you guys have never ran spotters before last year, right? Yeah, no. This was our first time. So even trying to understand the information that you need, do you find, obviously, with the limited, you only need the limited information. You don't care about where the leader is unless he's yeah. coming up on your tail, um, stuff like that. But... I know there's guys out there who want to know every little detail. They almost want them to be talking to them twenty like throughout the entire race. Yeah, like it is. It is nuts how people, different people, how different racers are, yeah. and how they want their information fed to them. Oh yeah, like I've watched videos of. Uh, oh, who was it? Was it Danny Benedict? Maybe. Oh, with Jordan Buster. Yeah. Yeah. And and. Uh, Watching how they spot, it was it was cool because they, they talk a lot more than uh, than what I like, right? Yep. Like I'm uh, I, like I said, I'm a very easy say what you need to say when you need to say it get, kind of make person. Me, and, get me clear and then just shut up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Essentially. And, and uh, Danny spotter was just like on him, on him, on him, right? But in a good way. Yeah, in that, a good way. It's the information, right? Yeah. Like, I think one of the best calls Jordan ever made was uh, uh, when Kyle Steckley ended up on top of the car at Flambro. Yeah. In, uh, in the late PC late models. Do you remember that from last year? It was last year or two years ago? No, I don't think I've ever heard so, of it. So, going into one, it was on a restart. And I can't remember who. Kyle Steckley ended up on top of somebody going into one. That's never a good situation. And the way Jordan was just, like, saying check up, you would think he was an auctioneer. Yeah. Oh, I after this we'll show you the video. If anyone knows the video that I'm talking about, like 
go check it out again. It is, it is absolutely nuts. I love watch it. Or if anyone wants to watch it, I'll, yeah. I'll have it for you over here in the uh, Boneyard Event Services podcast corner in just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the amount of information that they that they carry is is second to none. Oh, and sometimes it's necessary because that's what those drivers need. And there's yep. and obviously limited doesn't doesn't mean that you're not looking yeah. for other stuff. But yeah, if you just want to focus. Yeah, I'm I'm all about I'm all about doing my own thing with racing. Like I've always been like that. Um, my dad, I used to bug him all the time because we'd be at yeah. Grand Ben. And uh, I'd be running my laps, and he'd be sitting there, and this was always our get off the track, right? Yeah. And I, would, I, w- I wouldn't listen to him most of the time because I'd just get to that point where I can actually feel my car. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not stopping now. I'm going to keep running. I'm going to get the feeling that I need to get, and then I'll get off. Yeah. And it used to bug him so much, and I'm still the exact same way. If, 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 if you tell me to do it, and I know I need something else, I'm, I'm just going to do that. I'm not, I'm yeah. not going to listen. But then there's other people that, that do like that. Uh, I know that uh, Brian Batty, when he spotted for me, this is right at the start of the year. Yep. He uh, he started with the um, trying to get me to push it deeper into the corner. So it was, it was uh, going into the corner, you go deeper, 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 break. And that helped for the first little bit. Yeah. And I was like, okay, Brian, <laughs> enough. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, but I did appreciate it at first because it, it was it helped me with knowing, okay, the car is going to stick when I do yeah. this. And Brian is seeing that the car is going to stick. So it helped me know that I can push it that much further, right? Yeah. Uh, before we carry on here, I am just going to quickly put out here, if uh, we are going to be playing a little contest, if anyone is interested, I think we're going to, we just need one person. We're going to put him up against uh, Cody Wilds here in a little bit. You do have a chance to walk away with a uh, tumbler of your choice. We do have two tumblers. Uh, the loser will go home with a, a True North Racing podcast sticker. Um, so if anyone is interested in playing a little contest and test your racing knowledge, we'd be more than willing to have you up on stage. We got five questions for you, maybe six if the timing allows. But uh, if we got another competitor, we'll be more than happy to uh, uh, test your luck. We got some great questions, and I want and I want to use them so bad. Just saying, you got a good chance because I don't know very much. These questions aren't. Oh, actually, I mean, they may be hard to some people, but I feel I got a useless knowledge up inside my head. Yeah. And I was talking about this earlier, and the just with what I have in my head that goes through it. Some people look at me like, "How do you have that?" And it's like. I read it somewhere one time, and it's just stuck. And then, <laughs> you know what, though? It makes for great conversation starters. Yeah. It really does. And that's, what I f- and that's what I feel like a lot of my questions are. They're great conversation starters. So, like, uh, I'll, I'll, let's see. I'll, pr- I'll bring up one of them. I'll just give one of them away. If the bo- yeah. that question comes up, if we get to play this today, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll definitely uh, – uh, We'll definitely skip that question, but it's going to be one of our bonus questions here. So it's like, uh, oh, I don't want to use that one. That was a good one. Oh, that's a good one, too. Man, all my questions are good. That's the problem. <laughs> so, like, so I'll use this one. It goes, where did J.R. Fitzpatrick finish in the Camping World Truck Series at Daytona in 2009? Oh, dude, I have no clue. <laughs> See, it's easy enough. If you guys got a ba- some basic racing knowledge, we'd love to have you up here. Uh, you guys have yourself to be able to walk away with a tumbler. So uh, maybe two tumblers. I don't know. So, yeah, if anyone's got a racing knowledge and wants to uh, test their skills. We got a competitor? <laughs> He's walking away. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, it's just fun questions like that because in my, it, the way I look at it is that we want to have some fun. And th- this show has been a lot of fun so far. So thank you for everyone who's – been walking by it, just even listening to a couple seconds of the True North Racing Podcast presented by Vision 20 Studios. We appreciate you guys for even just tuning in just for a couple seconds. But this has been a, this has been a fun event, and it's uh, we're so thankful to the Boneyard Event Services who's given us a podcast corner. So even after the show, guys, if you guys want to come over and chit-chat with us, we'll be hanging out over there. I'll, if you guys see the Dr. Pepper bottle, that's where my table is. But uh, I forgot to grab my drink before coming up on stage, and I feel like I needed it sometimes. 
<laughs> but I don't think Feeney's going to uh, bring it over for me. As hey, Feeney. Feeney? Can you bring the? Can you bring his water? Can you, yeah, can you bring my... Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Well, oh, <laughs> water. It doesn't matter. It's a liquid. It's, it's, it's a liquid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. That'd be $6. Too bad I already paid for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> delivery fee. There's no such thing as delivery fee between us. <laughs> you get the cookies. Yeah. Not all of them. <laughs> Not all of them. They're for the table. Hey, I'm with him. You did not specify <laughs> anything there. No. <laughs> Before coming here this morning, I headed off to, up to Holton's Bakery up in Aaron because I had to go pick up some mail. And oh, fortunately, the, mail, the mailbox was closed, so I couldn't go in and get some. But I stopped picking up cookies. Hey, well, there you go. That's even better. Exactly. Cookies are awesome. They're the way of life. And I, was, I apparently said I was going to be making some homemade cookies for this weekend. What nope. the heck? I, so I, I got the next best thing. I got some cookies. So... Okay. I, I just purchased some cookies. They're homemade because they're because it's like a bakery, like an actual like true bakery, not just like a factory. Yeah, they make them downstairs in the basement of this place. So nice. It's it's really good down there. But, so uh, I mean, in a way, you didn't it's kind of you like did homemade. Bring homemade cookies. I technically did bring homemade cookies. I just never just specified whose who home they were being homemade. made in. Yeah. I never said Dr Pepper cookies. That's I mean, a to thing? be fair, to be fair, I also hear there's chocolate cake coming today. So chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. That's the worst kind of cake. I know. I'm hoping it's being presented to me during the next live taping uh, that we're going to be doing here at 510. We'll have the driver of the 28T, Cam Thompson, joining us here in a little while here. Uh, he is a dirt car, uh, dirt sprint car racer over at Oshawa Speedway, as well as a bone stock racer at uh, Flamborough Speedway. He's going to be racing under the BT banner this year. Um, kid's a wheel man, that is for sure. So you guys are going to be tuned into that one. The other thing we're going to have to make sure is we're going to have to calm him down enough to make sure he doesn't swear because our, our, our episodes with him will usually end up being uh, uh, R-rated. So we can't allow that on. <laughs> we have to put a restriction up on YouTube so people can't listen to it. But I, uh, uh, he's he's a great he's a great chat. He's a great oh, talk, yeah. person to talk to you. So, yeah, we'll have Cam Thompson here on the stage at 510 tonight. Uh, so make sure you guys come stop by. Uh, if you guys also to people walking around right now, if you guys go check out the uh, yesterday Speedway booth just off to the left of the stage, they got slot car races going on over there, and I'm sure they're always looking for great competitors. We're trying to get some racers over there. I, I'm even trying to I'm trying to talk to a couple people to uh, to, do, to to battle over there. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, we're looking for some drivers racing other drivers, and maybe putting maybe like a put some skin in the game. Put like five bucks on the table. Let's see what happens. I might head over there, honestly. It looks like a lot of fun. I keep looking over there because they got a couple stock cars on that, and it, and it's a look at that. Look at the way they just slide around there. Right. It looks like a lot of fun. Huh. Uh, I could be. I'm mesmerized by that. Yeah. Let's race. We're down. Let's go. We're going right after this. We got podcast versus podcast. Wild Sweet. World of Motorsports. Look at That's that. Sweet. Thank you for bringing that over. Look at the Bill That's Elliott sweet. one too. That is awesome. That is oh sweet. man, we'll be coming over after. Okay. We're going to do the Wild World of Motorsports versus the True North Racing Podcast. We got this going on. You are going down, okay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this has been a lot of fun, you guys. Um, yeah, it's, uh, so before we get out of here, because we got about 10 minutes-ish to go. Is that right, Bryce? Yeah, see, look at that. I'm pretty good with my timing over here. <laughs> uh, who do you want to thank to help that's uh, been – who do you want to thank – what sponsors do you want to thank – for uh, helping you through the 2024 season. Oh man! Do you I need have, a list? I need a list. I need a list. One second. Better here. get your list out. We'll, we'll this guy's got a out. dandy of a list. The fact that he needs to pull it out <laughs> and doesn't remember off the top of his head. It's uh, if you end up in victory lane, you need to have a sheet on the side of your car. Don't be looking at the car. Look at that sheet and just read oh, your sponsors. We're, we're making a little sticker that has the list oh, of them that's all. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's all you need. It's just a little sticker on there that shows who's your sponsor. So when you're looking, when you're talking to the person, you're looking like this, but you're actually looking at the car. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Dude, I could have pulled it up a lot quicker than you because I could. I have it on JoeMedia.ca. Oh, do you? Yes, I do. It's under your page. This is. This is. This looks really bad for me. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's bad when the uh, when your promoter. Uh oh. Uh oh. Do I not have? Uh oh. Uh oh. I feel like I'm blanking here. Oh no no, it's going. No. Where is it? Oh, there we go. It's loading. You got it. 
It's oh. loading here. There we go. I gotta re-edit this one. Holy crap! This is like this is a race to see what my. It's a race to are. see whose data is gonna actually work here. Yeah, all right. Oh, I got a couple. I got a couple showing up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There we go. Go through them. All right. And if there's any you don't have, skip over them. All right. Because <laughs> then, <So. laughs> then we need to sit down and fit and work on your page a little bit. Yeah, we do. So uh, first of all, we got McNichol Welding and Fabrication. We got AV Controls. We got Les McDonald Home and Auto Glass. We got Hanson's Your Independent Grocer. We got uh, Inglewood Mechanical, and we got uh, Andrika Elevators. Um, carry out service that's uh, with Hansons and Exeter. We got Dave Moore Fuels, CDN Film, Canadian Tire, Macaulay, uh, Lloyd's Paving, uh, Krabby Joe's Exeter, Wilds Printing, and uh, did I say Wilds Printing already? I don't think so. Did I have I, it on there twice? No, I don't think so. I think I think it was only okay. once. Okay. But yeah, that's that's, that's <laughs> everybody. <laughs> I told you I had your list. We were oh, of course my dad is working now, too. <laughs> after, after. After the fact. Thank you, Telus, for that one, I guess. <laughs> uh, where can they find you on social media? Where can they find you this summer racing? Uh, you can find me at Delaware Speedway Racing, and uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, on, on my website. It's all at Wildman Cody Wilds Racing. And TikTok. Oh, and TikTok. Yeah. See, yeah. I remember that. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's pretty new for you guys, though, that you guys are on TikTok, right? That is pretty for, new. For your yeah. racing team. I Honestly, I was sleeping in bed, and um, next thing you know, I got I got woken up from a notification that Wild Man Cody Wild's Racing posted a video on TikTok. <laughs> I was like, What? So I looked at it, and yeah, I guess I guess Dad at 4 a.m. decided to make a TikTok, and I was like, okay, well, sounds well, good to me. Well, this is what we're doing now. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, well, I know was... I've been keeping an eye on that and watching it, so it's uh, <laughs> it's going to be better once the racing season comes and we got that race content coming. Heck yeah. That's the tough part. We got such a short race season up here in Canada, but yeah. our, our off season's so long, and then by the time we go through all our content, it's like December. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You're not even. You're not even close to race season. Yeah, you're not even close. It's like I. I want more. I want more, but you can't get more. <laughs> yeah. But then again, that's where we travel to the states. That's where we go down to Florida yeah. throughout the uh, in January and February and go race at New Smyrna, uh, Volusia for the dirt guys, uh, East Bay. I think East Bay. East Bay is closing at the end of the year, unfortunately. Um, but they got those dirt tracks down there. So it's uh, in the obviously the asphalt tracks, which I, I want to get to. I want to cover some of those ones because they look like a lot of fun. Oh, I but, bet uh, you that'd be a blast. Oh, yeah. Uh, we just got a few more minutes here. If we got any competitors who want to come up and, and go up against Cody Wilds, we got some racing knowledge questions, and uh, you got your chance to walk away with a tumbler of your choosing here. I got two tumblers up here. You guys get to pick which one you want to go Haley. with. Haley. You coming? Uh, oh, come on, no. Haley. Come on. Come on. Hey, Mon it's a tumbler, man. You can't go wrong with a tumbler. You got to so, answer some questions. So we got five questions, each competitor, okay? One minute. One and minute? One minute. You got one minute to answer five questions, and the timer starts at the end of the first round. Oh. At the end of the first question, I start the timer. Oh, okay? okay. So it's kind of like a uh, uh, family feud. Yeah. It's kind of like their big money, like the final round kind of thing. The only difference is that your, both your questions are completely different. Okay. So, so there's no, like, you're not going to get points or anything like that. Your points are who w is who tabulates the most by the end. These are going to be, like, questions about things this before is like, even born. Oh, there is. There is. That's, that's a lot okay. of it is. I'm going to be honest okay. with you. Give me the easy ones. I want the tumbler. I'm going to ask you questions. So we'll start off with Cody. All right. So, uh, Cody, do you mind putting up a one-minute timer on your phone for us? Yeah, I can do that. I'm excited for this. Yeah. Yeah. You get Haley to run it for this one? Get it down. Yeah, yeah there we go. Want me to start it. All right. One, as soon as I finish the first question, you can start it, okay? okay? So, we got our first edition of Checkers or Records presented by Taylor to You Media and Design. If you guys are at the show walking around, she's in the back room. Uh, she does have a booth there, so go pick up a tumbler. Uh, I think she, I don't know what else she's got. I was back there. I think she's got some clothing. I'm not quite sure. But uh, you guys can go pick up your own True North Racing Podcast, Joe Media, Tumblr from her. She's only got a handful left, so go pick it up. Uh, are we ready? I think so. All right. 
Competitor number one, we got Cody Wilds. Question number one, when did Sunset Speedway first open? Oh, uh, nah, I'm going to say 1980. I don't know. Who won the final cast car championship? Oh, man. Um, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know any drivers. Who was Kenny the McNichol. We'll, we'll say that. <laughs> it's it's an Kenny answer. <laughs> Who was the first two-time champion in the APC series? Oh, man. You might as well just say I fail. <laughs> <laughs> no clue. This is terrible. In 2023, following suit with NASCAR, what does Sunset Speedway and the AC APC series implement to their races? <laughs> this has been fun. Which <laughs> Watch Haley get which, every one of these. Which right? driver won the inaugural Junior Hanley Classic? I don't know. Dude, I'm terrible at this game. All right, and the bonus question, if you can get this one, where did Richard Petty get his first start in NASCAR? I don't even know that, so I, don't, I can't get that All one. All right. <laughs> Just take Dude, a I'm guess. a terrible race car driver. I'm All supposed right. to know some of these. <laughs> All right, now we're going to bring out competitor number two. We got Haley McNichol. Haley, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, you ready to have some fun? Yeah. All right, yeah. so are you ready? Yeah. All right, competitor number two, we got Haley McNichol. When did Flambro first open? A long time ago. <laughs> I don't know, maybe like 1960. Who won the first NASCAR late model race at, the, at CNE Stadium in 1952? I don't know. Take a guess. Yeah. Hmm. NASCAR late model race. <laughs> I don't even know. All right. And who won the inaugural Quick Wick Super Stock Championship? Like previous? Like, like who won the first one? Oh. In 2021. 2022. 2021. 2022. Wasn't it Joe Lawrence? No. Nope. No, that was late models. I don't even know. Name all the tracks on the APC Late Model Tour. I uh, got Sunset, Delaware, Peterborough, Sobel. Um, Sunset, Delaware, Peterborough, Sobel, Flamborough. Oh, we got timer up and we had... A new Was that all the tracks? Which one? Did you use the name of the last track there? Flamborough. You actually got that one. I got one more so point than you. <laughs> So, we're going to go back through here. Sunset Speedway first opened their doors in 1968. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you're close. That was your question. That was your you question. Did. Oh, what did I say, 1980? 1980. <laughs> Who won the final cast car championship? That was J.R. Fitzpatrick. Mm. Who was the first two-time champion in the APC series? That was Brandon Watson. Uh, the choose cone was the answer to uh, what NASCAR uh Implemented and then Sunset and APC followed along. Mm, yes. Uh, the inaugural Junior Hanley Classic winner was Dale Shaw. So you got zero out of five. <laughs> yeah, zero out of five. You got zero out of five. I'm just so you know, I'm amazing at this kind of stuff. <laughs> and for Haley, she got her question was, "When did Flamber first open?" Your answer was old, <laughs> and it was 1962. Something like that, yeah. Uh, the first NASCAR late model race at CNE Stadium was won by Lee Petty. Aww. The inaugural Quick Wick Super Stock Champion was won by Lane Zardo. Yes, that makes sense. And then you had uh, name all the tracks. You got Delaware, Flamborough, Peterborough, Sobel, and Sunset. And now this is this is this was the actually I realized I gave you all the easy questions after looking at this one. Now, and I'm going to get ask you this one. Now known as the NASCAR Canada Series, what was the original name of the series? Like, of the, of the NASCARs, series. yeah. Oh. I don't even know. What was it? Are you NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Oh, yes, the Canadian Tire Series. So, oh. because Haley did win, she that. does get her choice of a tumbler. Oh, look at we that. do have race, Weekends Are For Racing or a Jomo Media Tumbler. You I get to pick. That is racing. sweet. Perfect. That's you even awesome. got a straw there for you as well. Oh, yes. Don't worry. You're not going home empty-handed. You are taking home that second tumbler. That's thank awesome. So, thank, thank you so you much, guys, much. for playing. We will be doing this again later on today. Uh, but, uh, yeah, thank you, guys. But uh, we're going to get out of here. i got a minute left. So, uh, Cody, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, for anyone checking us out, we'll be back up on stage at 5, 10 p.m. with uh, 
Cam Thompson. Uh, you guys can find me over in the Boneyard Event Services podcast corner, over, hanging out over there with the True North Racing podcast sign that's on the, currently on the table. If you guys want to talk racing or anything like that, you guys can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, as well as JomoMedia.ca. Thank you guys for tuning in into the True North Racing podcast presented by Vision 20 Studios here on the Gulf Racing Zone uh, stage. And we'll see you guys at 510. Thank you, guys. If you got the need for speed, John Morrison interviewing guests in the industry. Hey, short track, stop car racing. Gotta get it hype. Saturday night under the lights. Hear the engine rooming by. Smell the gas and feel the vibe. Going into overdrive. Drop the flag, then the car zooming by. Hey, True North Racing. Let's go.